good to have Terry in. He came in for this special weekend also to be a blessing to his wife, Portia, but, yeah. but also to bless us because uh, tomorrow I will go down to, like I said, Punta Gorda yeah. and be able to adopt uh, little Danny and little Abby. And, uh, and tomorrow we'll have two more Clarks. Come on. Two yeah. more Clarks at the church house. <laughs> Beautiful, Amen. Beautiful. So keep us in your prayers. Special, special day for us tomorrow. It's also special to have some of uh, you know, my, my kin folk in too as well. So that's one more time. Let's welcome my brother Terry. He's going to preach the word this morning. Hey, good morning, Fellowship Church. Good morning. Wow. Unbelievable. I've got the best seat. In the house, I have the most beautiful view. You can't imagine how I feel standing here looking at you. I've got the best seat in the house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I look at Fellowship Church. It is amazing amazing every time I come my battery just almost burst I just about burst I come down here and get charged up I feel like I'm at home Amen. when I come here I feel like I'm at home hey guess who came with me I've told y'all for almost two and a half years I didn't bring my white Porsche guess what she's here today her name is Portia, okay? And I brought my white Portia. And Portia, you're going to tell the folk. You're going to stand right here with me, and you're going to tell the folk what's been going on in your life. And just a brief, you're not going to preach. This is going to be just a brief little testimony and the help of your mom, your dad, and with you. And I think, do you all want to hear that, why she hasn't been here? I think that's good. I think that's good. So you come on right here. Come on. She's going to beat my tail after the service. I ain't going to be worth a dime. You're going to stand right there. Okay. This is my bride, Portia. Okay, I'll try to do this without getting teary. Um, Terry and I live out in the country. We have a pet... Texas longhorn cow, okay? And right across that, from that pasture, from that cow, lives my mom and dad. And uh, my mom and dad this year will be married uh, 59 years. And my mother has recently been diagnosed with dementia. And um, she now is having some seizures. And so I'm the oldest of five children. And I live there beside of her. And so kind of falls to me to kind of keep things going. And I know all of y'all have at some point in time done that with your own family. So I am so thankful, so, so very thankful to you as a church and as brothers and sisters in Christ to me for all your prayers, for my mom especially, and for my dad. Even, I mean, because two years ago he had a, a brain bleed. He fell and had to have two major surgeries. I got down here and had to turn around and drive all the way back home that night. So I didn't get to see any of you. And since that time, I've not been able to come back. Um, I ended up with knee surgery. And um, I think the Lord decided he was going to slow me down a little bit. And I ended up with blood clots. And I didn't know how bad it was until after it was all said and done with. And um, started out behind my knee, but I had them running up my leg. And I threw some into my lungs. They put me in the hospital was on blood thinner, but I can say today that I have no blood clots. Hey, come on. Um, I, I am not on any kind of blood thinner, but the doctor had said, I'd rather you not travel for about a year. So this month, it has been a year since I was given a clear bill of health. Now, on top of that, with all the meds and the medication, I've uh, become a little bit more of me to love but Terry doesn't seem to mind. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'm going to get that back under control. But um, I do covet your prayers. Um, I love the Lord. 
I've been, I've been saved a long time. I was brought up in a Christian home. My brothers and sisters are all Christians. So I have a peace there knowing that uh, I'm going to be with my family forever. Um, I have three beautiful granddaughters. Uh, Claire is six. Uh, Reagan, her baby sister, will be three in March. And then we have Mira, who just turned three in December. So we're a house full of girls. Terry has a ball. Absolutely. Just say it. Absolutely. Two of them live in the woods down behind us, so we see them a lot. And uh, hopefully one day they'll get to come and visit with you guys, and I can show them off. But like I said, I give God all the glory for where I'm at today. Because without Him, nothing is possible. All things are possible in the Lord. So. Amen. Whatever your trial is that you're going through, the Lord's not going to leave you out there by yourself. He's with you. So um, I work for a community college, and so I was able, whenever people would, got real scared because I could have died, they said, Portia, do you know what could happen? And I said, you know, I do, but I have this peace knowing that God's not through with me yet. So I'm here for a reason, and you guys just keep praying. Pray for me and Terry, our family. And especially for my mom and dad, that you will give my mother peace because you can see a fear in her eyes every now and then because she knows that there's a problem. And just help us children that will understand and be able to be there for her. And I love all of you in the Lord. All right, don't go anywhere. Stay right here. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, and no more tears to dim the eyes, all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day. Come on! I want to hear you. Come on! What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace He did! Takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land What a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be won't it praise the lord thank you dear thank you Oh, she is the best thing that's happened to me this side of heaven. You think I'm kidding? You want to hear crap in somebody's life? Baby, I got it. That's the best thing that's happened to me. Here. That's a good job. Thank you, Lord. That's just the way it is. It's the way it is. The Bible says, men, love your wives. So when I'm loving her, guess who I'm honoring? Guess who I'm honoring? The Lord himself. Beautiful. Well, I've got kind of a nutty, uh, I don't know, it's goofy. I've got kind of a nutty little message I want to talk about today called Outnumbered. What does that mean? Outnumbered. Goofy. And really going to be some familiar scripture that you already know. But I want to look at it maybe a little bit different, a little different angle. Now, Portia and I, we were blessed to have all the kids where we were in church. 
as youth directors. We had them for eight years, and uh, oh my gosh. The thing about working with young people, if you're not really careful, you wind up falling in love with them. We had all the teens, and it wasn't just at church. If they had recitals, they had ball games, they had whatever. They became our life. They became our kids. That's what we did. So if I talk to you in such simple demeanor that you say, well, I'm not a child, I'm guilty. That's just how I talk, okay? That's what I'm used to, talking to kids, okay? So that's where we are. Going to talk about outnumbered. I don't know if you already know that God has a plan for you in your life. Maybe you do. Maybe you've plugged into that and you're pursuing that and you know what God wants you to accomplish in your life. Well, congratulations if you've gotten there, okay? Hmm. What is God's plan for us? Well, I would, but I'm just not sure. I might be a little overwhelmed to do that right now. You know, I've just got a lot of irons in the fire. I'm just not sure that can happen today. I feel a little inadequate. You know, God couldn't use me. His plan wouldn't mean for me to do that. That's craziness. Maybe you feel outgunned. Maybe you're a little underfunded. Anybody underfunded? I'd love to do that, but I'm a little underfunded. Could be you're outnumbered. Now that's goofy. What do you mean I'm outnumbered? I'll tell you what, if you're outnumbered, might not be a, pla a bad place to be as far as being outnumbered. We're going to look at two different occasions in the Bible. Doesn't make any sense. Does not make any sense because of the numbers. Fellowship Church doesn't make any sense. The project that you have going. It makes no sense. You were totally outnumbered. And I'm not really saying to the point of opposition. Just so many hurdles to cross. So many things happening from without and from within. In Fellowship Church. Absolutely outnumbered. You shouldn't exist. <laughs> Most churches fail what? First seven years? They're gone. They're out. They're history. Look at y'all, you're thriving, you're growing, you're booming, you're banging. And I'm not talking about the building. My neck is almost worn out from people that's came in here and just loved on me. Thank you for that. I think that we need to come to church where we can come and just feel like, you know, this person cares about me. They care that, you know, that I have needs and that it's not easy for me to be here. I think that's a good thing to love on them. Say, I just love you. What's wrong with that? It's what Jesus did. I think that's a beautiful thing. Should love each other. Because Jesus gave us a new commandment. Ten wasn't enough. He put that level on there that we would love one another as He loves us. Amen. I think that's a pretty good commandment. Amen. Pretty good commandment there. Joshua 1.8. Here's the road that we're going to walk down that I didn't even really think about. I'm glad my wife's with me today. Feels normal now that she's here. Praise the Lord for that. God tells Joshua in Joshua 1.8. Look at this. Joshua 1.8. And we're talking about if you're outnumbered. But listen to this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have what? Y'all shalt have what? Good what do you mean I should have good success? Is not all success good? If you're successful, is that not good? No, it ain't. If you think and you nog in a minute, well, if there's good success, there's got to be bad success. Is there bad success? Without a doubt. I mean, you could be the most profitable drug dealer on the west coast of Florida. 
You could. You could be living in the finest prison in the country. There is bad success. All right? I'm just telling you that. But we're going to focus on good success. But when I do what I do for the Lord and His plan for me, I want to have good success. What do I need to do to get the good success out of what He wants me to do if you're here at Fellowship or if you're somewhere else in God's family? What do I need? What are my bullets that I need to follow to have good success? Because we know there's bad success. Oh, I know. I'll prepare myself. Nothing wrong with preparation. Nothing wrong with preparing yourself. That may not be all there is to it. Okay? You can be very well prepared and lose. You can be overly prepared. Well, you can be overly prepared in a church service and absolutely squash the Spirit. Not allow any freedom of the Spirit. To move. I mean, it happens. But I want to look at how do we equip ourselves to ensure good success. We want to have a list of stuff really to help make sure that we're successful in a good way. And we're going to look at a story that you know very well. We're going to look at Goliath of Gath. Guess how tall this guy was? I'm six five and a half. Meet Goliath of Gath. And look, I use object lessons. I work with kids. Okay? Can anybody see how big or tall Goliath of Gath is? That's nine feet three inches. That's how tall he is. That would be like me and little Abigail going one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, little Danny, not Abigail, Danny, going one-on-one. -on -one. I'd beat her fanny. I absolutely would. But you look at this guy. Number one, look at him. Look at his stature. Now, he's going to prepare himself. This guy is a seasoned veteran of war. This guy is a merc. He's from the tribes of Anakim, the giants of Anak. That's who they were. And they would lent themselves out, Gary, to groups or, you know, tribes. If they paid them money, they would fight their battle for them. That's what they would do. So this is Goliath. He's 9'3". Already I'm getting outnumbered. What do you think? What do you think? Let's look at what he did to prepare for a confrontation that you're very well aware of to ensure that he had good success. Can we do that? If we can do that, say amen. Let's look at what this giant did. And you know the funny thing? Everybody in this whole story with David and Goliath of Gath, everyone in the story called him a giant except David. He called him an uncircumcised Philistine. I don't care how big he is. But let's look what Gath did first. Let's look. See what Gath did to ensure that he had good success. 1 Samuel 17, 3 through 7, 3. And the Philistines stood a mountain on the one side. Israel stands on the mountain on the other side. There's a valley between them. There went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named who? Goliath is there, whose height was six cubits in a span. You compute that, that's nine feet three inches. There he stands right behind me. This guy is huge. Let's see what he did. He had a helmet of brass on his head. This guy's wearing a helmet of brass. That's probably a good thing. If you're going to engage in a battle, yeah, I would definitely put on a helmet of brass. It's a good thing. And then he had a coat of mail. Do we know what that is? That's like that little interlocking metal chain thing. It looks like a big blanket. 
And they would put it on so if the sword or something hit it, well, it didn't do anything. It sparks. Y'all know what a coat of mail is. Weighs a ton. Well, he's wearing that. That's pretty good prep there. What do y'all think? If I'm going to battle, yeah. They're going to send out a champion against me. I want that on. So we got a brass helmet. He's got this coat of mail, which is just metal. That's what he's wearing. Of course, he wants to have good success. The weight of the coat is 5,000 shekels of brass. That ain't light. All right. Next, he's got, let's read it. He had, a, he had a graves of brass on his legs, a target of brass between his shoulders. Keep going. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. His spear's head weighed 600 shekels. That's 20 pounds. The, the spear head weighed 20 pounds. You know what a 20-pound sack of potatoes feels like? Well, put that on the end of an eight-foot stick. And you're going to throw it. You ain't going to throw it far. That's what he did. That's what he had. That's what this guy is. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's bean. Spear's head weighed 600 shekels. That's tw almost 20 pounds. One bearing, it even had a shield bearer. So let's look. Let's look what he did. Goliath. He's hardened. He's battle tested. He's a mercenary. He will get in your grits. He flat out. He'll kick your fanny. And he came to the party dancing, ready to rock. That's where he's at. He's nine feet three inches tall. He's got a helmet of brass. He's got a coat of mail, which is metal. He's got brass leg guards. He's got on brass shoulder pads. He's got a big sword. He has a huge spear with a 20, out, 20 pound point, and he even got somebody out walking in front of him holding a shield. I don't know about y'all, but I would be. This guy's for real. All right. He is for real. This guy's for real. All right, then we got that picture of what he's doing to ensure good success. Let's look at David. Let's look at David. They couldn't get a champion to go out and face this behemoth. And David said, well, you know, well, I'll do it. Let's see what David did to prepare Oh, I love that. Let's look what David did to prepare against this guy. I hadn't even seen that. That's great. 1 Samuel 17. We're going to read it. 1 Samuel 17, 34. And David says to Saul, Thy servant, keep your sheep. I'm a servant. I'm a sheep keeper. And there came a lion one time and a bear and took a lamb. I went out after him. I killed him. Got the lamb out of the mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be just like the lion and the bear. Seeing he's defied the armies of the living God. Wow, that's key there. That's key. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a what? And with a what? But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And all this assembly is going to know on this day that the Lord doesn't say with a sword and spear, for the battle is who? The battle is who? How many of y'all want to tangle with the Lord? Can you put on enough of that coat of mail to do that? Wow. The battle is the Lord's. He will give you to our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came, David drew nigh to meet. And, uh, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. David did what? He ran to him. <laughs> David ran to meet this guy. He ran to him. Was he so far away he couldn't tell how big he was? <laughs> he ran to this guy. Are you kidding me? So we're going to run to our adversary? Or are we going to just buckle down and take what, whatever they want to put on us? Is that what we're going to do? 
But you know, in Ephesians 6, when we put on the whole armor of God, ain't nothing protecting the back. There's nothing there. We're going to face our enemy. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take him on. And it's going to get nasty. It's going to get ugly. But with the power of the living God, what else do we need? Let's look what David did to prepare himself in this. Goliath, hard battle tested merc, nine foot three inches tall, helmet of brass, coat of mail, brass leg guards, brass shoulder pads, large sword, gigantic spear with a 20 pound head on it, and a shield bearer. Let's look what David brought to the, to the dance. Let's see, right here. Well, he's not a, uh, he's not a soldier. David's not a, you're sending somebody out to fight this guy, it's not a soldier. Well, what did he bring? It's got to be something huge. What did he bring? A sling. Now that's interesting. He brought a sling. And what else? He brought five stones. What else did he bring? Whoa, that's the kicker. Now that's the kicker. He brought five stones. And some people say, well, why did he bring one? Didn't he have confidence in God? Well, I've heard it said that Goliath had four brothers. So that's why he brought five stones. Not an issue. If he had brought six, then he would have had five brothers. But what did he bring here on the very bottom? What is that? The Hebrew God. Yeshua? Yahweh? He brought the God of our Bible with him. Is he outnumbered? Is David outnumbered? People that ain't even close, he's outnumbered. Who won? Who won this? But I thought he was outnumbered. What if you're outnumbered? What if you're outnumbered in what you think God wants you to do? I can't do that. Be like a Gideon in telling God, I'm the smallest and the weakest. Why do you want me to go do that? You cut my staff down. I'm going against 135 people of these Midianites. And you got me down to 300 people? Are you kidding me? The odds ain't looking good, God. Why do you want me to do it? And so, what Gideon winds up doing in the end, he comes up with a plan. Gives them some pictures. Gives them some torches. Says we're going to make all kind of racket. In all the confusion, they kill themselves. The Midianites. They did. They killed themselves. The ones that didn't commit suicide. The others killed themselves. Oh, torches going everywhere. Pictures everywhere. Trumpets blasting. It was crazy. It was a madhouse. Thought a bomb went off in the camp. But you know, it's not bad to be outnumbered if... The God of your Bible is in your corner. It's okay to be outnumbered. Don't let the devil defeat you in what you feel God has laid on your heart to do. This church is full of ministries. No one can do it like you. No one can do it like you. Can it get done? Yes, but it won't be like you can do it. Don't let the devil defeat you there. If you're outnumbered, you're in a good camp. Look at David. Did, he have, did David have good success? Went on to be the greatest king Israel ever had. Even to this day. Greatest king they ever had. Did Goliath have any success at all? And totally, he was ready for the dance. He didn't make it. We'll pray, Father. Thank you for giving us what we need when we need it. Even if we're outnumbered, that's not a bad place to be. We're in good company. Because when we're outnumbered and it happens to pass, we know that you did it. And we take no credit for it. And that's where we are at Fellowship Church. We take no credit for where fellowship is today. Because we're totally outnumbered and it shouldn't even be here. That's the way it is. So we acknowledge you. We love you today. We love these which have come. And Father, it's been a blessing for me to have my wife with me today. And I know that you did that. 
Thank you for the good word today. And I just thank you for loving a sinner just like me. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.